meeting. And we've got Akang. Akangsha, where are you calling from? From um, Maidenhead, so that is England, UK. Maidenhead. Do people live in Maiden, Maidenhead? It's very beautiful. <laughs> it's it's a leafy area and uh, I like it. It's very peaceful. Well, welcome. Anyway, hello everyone. So welcome to this, the Be Well meeting, not a webinar or a presentation, but it is a meeting so we can all get a chance to interact with our co-host, topic facilitator, Akanksha. Okay. Um, what's the idea of this Be Well? Be Well is business entrepreneurial well-being. Business entrepreneurial well-being. That's how we came to the word Be Well. Okay. My name, my name is Gary, Gary Judge. Uh, I'm the owner of a language school in Verona, Italy. I have been the owner for 25 years. And so when I was thinking about how I could actually pay back some things for my good fortune of running a business and having my health and a family, I said, well, well, I could just put my business knowledge and my connections together. And this is what happened. A year ago, Be Well came out and we've now got like, we've had nearly 40, 50 weeks of, uh, of um, meetings every Tuesday and the videos are on the YouTube channel. So it's something that's just, I enjoy bringing people together and bringing people who talk about interesting topics about business and mental well-being. Okay. Um, today's title, today's meeting is entitled Unleashing Potential, Harnessing the Power of Belief in Mentorship. Let me open up someone else that's coming in. So today, we, our topic facilitator, I won't say guest speaker because we're not expecting someone just to get on stage and talk to us and just entertain us, but it's more interaction, okay? So we will all get a chance to ask questions as well. Just put your, put your thumb up or you raise your hand or whatever, and we can jump in and ask some questions. There'll be in, uh, a session like this. So today we have Akansha. Her surname is Adivareka. I hope I said that correctly. She's I an, love that, Gary. Thank you. <laughs> she's an HR engagement specialist. She thrives on getting to the heart of an issue and solving tough problems. She provides a flexible HR service that is highly satisfying and committed to fostering a healthy workforce. So, welcome to the Be Well, uh, Akanksha. I said, put you. your Put your contact details in the chat so if we want to get in contact with you we can directly and i think everyone else as well who, or the audience can do that so we can contact you directly should we want to continue this conversation so thank you Gary. Introduce yourself a little bit and then we can we can start with uh, the topic today um i will enter the details towards the end of this um webinar if it, that's okay yeah sure sure sure, sure yeah sure. yeah okay uh, hi everyone. Um, I'm I'm really grateful first of all that Gary has invited me to co-host um, this webinar with himself. Um, it's my first ever show on LinkedIn, and hence I reached out to everyone and said, "Please join us." <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so uh, I'm very excited, a little nervous, and um, only because I care about it. So um, I really, really hope that. Everything that I say, um, because it comes with good intentions, and um, I just want you all to believe that what I have to present here is a real life experience and something that I can take you back in time and get you imagine, um, get you in my shoes and feel what that belief really feels like because it's really powerful. So um, this is back in 2018 when I joined Booba. And um, before that, I was doing random jobs when I came from Mumbai to the UK. And it was very difficult for me to um, decide on whether I'm going to live in the UK. Am I going back to Mumbai? Being a dentist, I couldn't practice here because I needed a license. So I had to complete my studies and um, and basically, I was confused. Let's be honest. <laughs> so um, I joined Boopa. Uh, I got a healthcare consultant job, and um, it was my very first month. And I approached my manager, and I asked her, 
that I'm quite an artist at heart. Is there any project or campaign that you can give me an opportunity to work with the DNI team, which is a diversity and inclusion team? And um, she told me that I can take you to our big boss and she may be able to help you because she knows people in Bupa really well. And that is key, people. So um, she took me to the big boss and her name is Jane Redgrave. Um, when she took me to her and I introduced myself to her, I showed her my Instagram page and she told me, so your name is, I said, you can call me AK. And, um, and I think it was the very first moment that I came across Jane and we just started to get along. It started to feel like the trust was always there without even knowing each other. And, and that really just made me feel that we are sharing values together. And that was the first um, tick mark for me when I considered Jane as my mentor. Um, I told her that I really want to grow. I want a career. And until now, I've come here in 2016. I'm a dentist, but I'm not practicing. Um, I don't want to give up on dentistry because I have invested eight years in dentistry. And it's it's it would really be a shame if I don't research and, you know. So she helped me a lot. She told me, uh, we have Bupa Dental and et cetera, et cetera. Um, she also, but somehow I told her, no, I want to um, collaborate on a piece. I'm an artist. Could you help me with that? Because at the back of my mind, I knew I don't have funds to um, establish myself as a dentist who can practice in the UK. So, um, so she um, reached out to almost every team in Bupa. Bupa is huge. She reached out to the communications team, the social media team, the marketing team, the campaigns team, um, literally everyone. And she said, I have AK in my team. She's a healthcare consultant. She's an artist. This is the link she's provided me. This is all the work that she's done. And let's give her an opportunity. And then it all started with a survey where, you know, the pulse survey, Gary, where you're asked to express yourself, how you feel in the company, the organization. Um, and I really expressed myself so seriously in that survey. Like I really wanted an opportunity. And I said, I'm a creative person. I really expressed myself like from scratch. And uh, it it did it did come to me that I was noticed for that. So that's the second thing. You have to be transparent. If you have anything on your mind, just be out there. Clarity is everything. If you tell people what you want, they will try and help you. But if you're, if you're, if you're not willing to initiate, take that first step, you will never be able to find your mentor to have that relationship of mentorship. So um, so I initiated, I, um, I wrote everything that I wanted in the survey. I, I expressed uh, that I wanted to lead a campaign as a creative artist and, um, and Jane made it happen. So I got a opportunity to, um, to present a piece of art and represent a community, which is a pride community in Bupa and I did that through literally a fist, which is courage. And I drew that, I painted, I created a video, we put it on YouTube. Uh, we then had those prints on t-shirts where, where they went on a street parade in Manchester. Uh, and then um, because I, I, yeah, because that's where uh, the flagship for Bupa is in Manchester. So uh, they had a street parade, uh, that piece of art on, everyone's chest on the t-shirt and they're like walking the roads uh it was like a proud moment for me and um I think after two weeks of time I went to Jane and I said this is so good Jane can I have a momentum I want this to be in continuation <laughs> and and she told me yes AK we can um and she told me um you've got some hunger there you've got fire in your belly I said yeah because I really want to do something about myself my life my career and I really feel sad that I don't have one so um, so she uh, she helped me get in touch with the people team. Um, she uh, sent me with, and, and this, bear in mind, Gary, this is all with my current role in retention team. 
uh, as a healthcare consultant, and she helped me to get in touch with various teams, uh, participate in uh, different campaigns, uh, different surveys, and then uh, she also um, sent me with a team of uh, healthcare, other healthcare consultants, uh, to host um, uh, or, or possibly not host, but be a voice uh, representing her team uh, into the DNI uh, initiatives that Bupa took. So she really uh, got acceleration, uh, momentum to my choice of living in Bupa. And um, was that your first mentor? Akansha, was that the yes. first, first ever mentor? Yes. Yeah. So it was a great experience. A I, very I, good experience. So and after that person, did you meet, uh, did you have other mentors or did you just stay with her? No. So I realized after being with Jane that everyone who helped me in my life at some point of time, who was a guiding light in my life, they were my mentors. It's just that it didn't occur to me at that point of time, Gary, because in Bupa, Jane held a webinar where she was speaking about mentorship. And when she was speaking about it, it just struck to me. So it takes a mentor to understand that you need a mentor and you are with a mentor, <laughs> if that makes sense. Yeah. I mean, I, if, I, if I should, I, great opportunity. I think great, uh, you found that it was the right timing. I mean, I, if I just share my journey, I think it's a 25 year business journey that I needed a mentor straight away. If I if I had found one, I think I could have maybe, I don't know, 25 years, maybe I could have let, had the same success in five years or 10 years or 15 years, but I, I didn't find a mentor, but not because I didn't find one, because I don't think I was ready for one. I think that's also important. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Like, like a mentee being ready for the mentor and accepting the mentor's uh, input and knowledge and so on. Yes, and, and Gary, I agree with that um, because that's when I said you have to take that initiation. You have to initiate towards this relationship as a mentee and you have to tell your mentor what, it, what are your goals? What is it that you want to achieve? Um, there has to be a, 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 a an honest conversation uh, between the two of you in terms of how achievable that goal is um, it, it just cannot be a dream that uh, you tell your mentor, oh, I want to be, um, you know, an influencer. No, that's that's way down. What is it that you want to do, AK, tomorrow, in a month's time, in, in, in three months? So you have to have that journey planned. Uh, and we did plan that with Jane. And that's when I told you she sent me for this survey. She sent me uh, for the leadership team representing the retention team. And not just me. She focused on several other heads in a team. And that is something really amazing about her. So these are things I've learned from her. That first thing is you have to initiate yourself. Um, you have to be, you have to have clarity in terms of what you really want from your relationship with your mentor. Um, be open to feedback because if you're not open to feedback, uh, it's very difficult to, um, to measure how far you've come, to track your progress. So I would say feedback, and like Eva, I have, uh, we have Eva here, and I've always uh, learned so much and inspired from her posts. She talks about feed forward mechanism as well, something that you can ask her. <laughs> and uh, I'm sure she'll have something to add here. It's a golden nugget. I, I, I'd like to hear a little bit about feed forward, uh, sort of feedback. Ava, do you want to share some, some sort of insights on that, how, how to give feedback in the right way. I think that's very important today uh, in yeah. the setting. Yeah, it, it really is very critical. And um, so the, the thought about feed forward is coming from Marshall Goldsmith, a uh, very um, famous uh, coach, business coach. And uh, it's not because feedback, like, like it's mentioned in the name, it's looking back so what did you do well? What do you have to improve? But feed forward is really about what can we improve? So which direction can we can we go? What do we really need to to implement? And, and just it's it's really it's looking forward instead of looking backwards. Mm. And that's that's really empowering because it's it's it helps us to focus on our strengths and really mainly focusing on on our uh, positive 
Yeah, our strengths. David, uh, Stevens, you got you got something to add there? Yeah, I, so far everything I hear is just fantastic. I I've been mentored since what was it nineteen seventy three, and being a mentor myself, one of my best mentors. Whenever he gave me a project to do, he would not tell me how to do the project. He said, you figure it out. He was not afraid of me to fail because he knew that I could learn through failure as well. And he, he was just phenomenal. And he was from Germany. I, I was a design supervisor for a Volkswagen. And uh, he was great. My mentor before that was a Polish infantry officer that got put into a POW camp when Germany invaded Poland. And he still had the tattoos on his arm. And he wasn't afraid of failure. He wanted you to learn. And, you know, everything that you said so far about mentorship is right on target. And a lot of people don't quite get it, but you're doing great. It's really, I, I'm really enthused. And Akanka, Akanka, take us, take us away then. Tell us some more insights under this mentorship. Uh, and yes, and I'm mentorship is not necessarily only at work, right? It can be also in the family. It can be uh, in your community and so on. Absolutely. And just like David mentioned about his um, experience, uh, I was nodding my head because even Jane, uh, she's not someone who would feed you the solution. She wants you to work hard for it. And that's the yeah. best thing about her. Yeah. So she makes you work on your journey, on your path. Um, and um, I realized one thing that when I left Bupa and um, one fine day, I was like, okay, I need a career. I just don't want to do random jobs. Um, and then I connected my dots uh, from the past and I realized I have done a lot of collaborations with the people team. So probably I fit best in the people team in HR. And when I started applying for jobs, Gary, my CV really highlighted my work done in Bupa and that is only because of my mentor. Do you see? Because it's the power of networking. If she wouldn't network, with several other teams and she wouldn't ask them to give me an opportunity. I wouldn't have that on CV. And these days job market is so difficult. You, you can't get a job you wish to start your journey in. You, you have to really work hard. You have to have those qualifications. Experience is a must. Even if you want to like be an administrator, which is the start point in any, any career. And, um, and I realized this, that this is only because my CV had it. And most of the recruiters used to have it. Wow, you lived a life in Bupa. That's quite a celebrity life. And I'm like, yes, I did, because I was published after the Pride event on the Belief in You calendar uh, for the month of August. They shared my story. So we had those calendars on every pod in the uh, in the whole of Bupa office. Then uh, after that, I also um, had one of my fountain pen collaboration collaborator, which is an American company, Esther Brook. I don't know if any of you know or heard of it, but Esther Brook Pens, um, uh, I, I did several collaborations with them on social media and they used to send me their new pens for a review with few inks and, and maybe a few accessories that pens like. So I had once asked them to ship it to Bupa office because I was not at home. And when it came to the office, um, I, I just showed it to my mentor. I said, see, these are the collaborations I do. And then it just sparked me. I said, Jane, you know the campaign that we did? It was so successful. Can I have a Mobla pen from Bupa as a token <laughs> of appreciation and collaboration? So she said, yeah, let me find that out for you. She made that happen too. She just told them that AK has requested this. She has collaborations with Fountain Pens. And I don't know what did she do behind the scenes. But in two weeks or three weeks of time, I had the CEO of Bupa, Mr. Alex Perry, come into our department, which is um, the um, retention team. And, um, and he was standing there with a mom in his hand. And I was like, is that for me? 
And I was like, Jane, is that for me? And she's like, yes, hey, Kay, you must be grateful because Alex was not in the plan, but he, he would like to see you with the pen and he would present it to you. So I think this whole um, picture that she painted is what a mentor does for a mentee. And, and hence, it's just, it's, just, it's just the power of belief. She believes in me. She knows I will do it. She doesn't feed, but that's how a mentor should be. Like, let the, we, let we, the mentee we, be. We could, all, we, could, we could all do with a mentor like Jane. I think we can all, we can, or not, it sounds like a, a powerful person. Steve's got a question. Steve, you got any, a question or an insight into oh. your hand up? It's interesting because I, I think that there's this, we have to be ready for the mentor, but there's but there's personal qualities that we need to have, right? There's levels of emotional int intelligence that we need to have. There's levels of maturity. There's levels of intelligence, you know, just being wise in, in the way that you lead and act. And that that is something that we can't be significant until we realize that we already, already are significant and that we don't need to do anything for that. So it's showing up authentic, you know, authentically. And I think that's what what the spark was that allowed you to to make that connection with your mentor is one you weren't seeking it right there was not the you might have been seeking it but but you weren't pressuring it and so it was a real gift that someone gave to you and and it's because they saw within you qualities that they really appreciated and so that was the the first statement which was when when you first go on this journey, it's the realization that we can do a little bit of work and we do a little bit the little bit of work on self-awareness. And once we do that work, then we'll be ready for when the mentor is there. Because I do believe I was the one that never had the mentor. And I was always looking for one. And then and then I became one. Wow. <laughs> and I had no idea how to do that. And the idea is it's you see, you see qualities in others that they don't even see within themselves. And I think yes. that that's the biggest thing a mentor does. But then also there's an authenticity. There's a, something that you like about them that sparks that relationship. And so well done. And then the second thing that came up was you don't even feel like you've done any, you know, sometimes you even feel like a failure and you go through life, but then one thing will happen and you do it and you enjoy it and you keep doing it. And, and you do it because of the reason that you're doing it and not for significance or anything else. And sometimes there's little, there's little, reward that you get out of that. But after like a year or maybe two years, you look back and it's like, wow, I have done a lot, right? I have done some things that are quite significant. And that I think is is when those are the things that the mentors see it within you, right? It's that spark of that connection. So that, that's all I wanted to add. Yeah. So yeah. beautifully said, Stephen, yeah. I, I think, I think and just to add to Steve there, sometimes as a mentor, it's also to know like uh, when someone comes to you, and they're not ready and to tell them that they're not ready to to undergo what they're the, the the journey that they want they want to take in that moment um i've had to do some mentoring i've done some mentoring with association with young entrepreneurs who have startups and i've had i remember one girl who came to me and i had to tell her you're not ready uh to open a business and invest and put money into it yet you're gonna have to go get some experience and then come back and so I think as a mentor is also to, to be honest with them and be open and transparent and tell them exactly where they are. It is indeed very important, Gary. Um, you have to be honest and open, otherwise that relationship is not going to evolve. And it's very important for any relationship to evolve. Otherwise, it just it's just experiencing a stagnant uh, phase. Um, which is not bringing any form of productivity or well-being to both involved and invested in that relationship. So uh, there's a lot that comes from self-awareness. Uh, I think Stephen mentioned that about self-awareness. And I am a complete devotee when it comes to self-awareness. Uh, I do my meditation, I do my breathing exercises, I do my intuition exercises. And for me, this living is very important. I call that the spiritual side of life. And it just keeps me present in the present. So uh, that consciousness that you deliver uh, when it comes to your performance is very important. Like he also said, your emotions have to be well balanced. And that comes from being high sorry, comes from achieving high self-awareness. Um, I've also learned 
from my father who who never had uh, the opportunity to be raised by his own parents so he had mentors and as a child i've always heard his stories about mentorship and sometimes me and my brother used to get bored because he used to say the same story all the time <laughs> he used to be on a repetitive mode but listening to that and now when i found several other mentors even in my current place um i've just started my new journey in a school as a hr officer and i have people helping me um they are uh, redirecting me to how the employment law and school law differs and they're explaining me things this is this is guidance and that one should be grateful for because only people make a big a huge difference to your growth wherever you are so i'm the only i'm the only one asking questions you mean steve so you you guys can drop in anytime you want okay i've got another question um looking for mentors looking for men like um are we looking for just physical people or can mentors be also books, um, films, I don't know, podcasts? What, what is, is that also a mentorship or not? Is that a kind of form of mentorship? So for me, Gary, it has to be a human touch. Uh, for me, feedback is very important when I'm on a journey and I'm all set to achieve something. Um, I, I think books can shape your actions. It can influence your decisions because it is something that a great master has delivered in, um, in basically he's lived his life, his experiences and delivered to you so that you can learn lessons through it. So I think that is definitely, um, it definitely helps, uh, and contributes towards your journey, but my experience, I prefer someone I can talk to, I can have a feedback, and I work on my feedback. I, I never say a no, uh, and I never say, or I'm never always in a battling mode, or you know what, no, this is not for me, I think you're wrong. If it is, I would just say, yeah, what you're saying is right, but what if we can implement it this way and add that creative touch to it? So I always put myself out there. Um, I always request and um, I think that that works for me, Gary. I mean, that's me. For me, yeah, no, no, no. It, it, was, it was just just a thought because sometimes you're not able to find the mentor around you that you look that you think you you need or you deserve or whatever. You're not able to find it. So the question was, can that that being be found not physically but in other things? That was that was my that was just a reflection there. Debbie's got a hand up. Debbie's have you got a question or a mm -hmm. insight? Yeah, I, 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 AK, thanks a lot. Um, I'm I'm curious how you would explain the difference between coaching, <clears throat> mentorship, enabler, pathfinder. You know, because all of those things kind of intertwine a little bit. Yeah, I agree with you. Yeah. <laughs> I agree with you, Debbie. And that's a very, very good question. Um, for me, the key differentiator is uh, a coach coaches you on a particular subject, a topic that you need help with. Uh, I've had coaches um, who have helped me understand, okay, how will you, how will you move or literally upskill yourself um, in terms of your learning and development? So that would be my coach uh, who takes me on a one-to-one -one and explains me what's happening with you. Okay, this is the phase you have evolved until here. This is your next step. Maybe we can work on this and have a little chat mm -hmm. later again, how you're feeling about it, et cetera. So that for me is coaching. Uh, when it comes to mentoring, um, sometimes that can even, it, it can happen with your coach, but with a mentor, that relationship even transcends the company, the organization, you start um, sh you start feeling that that relationship has a lot to offer in terms of not just growth, but also, uh, sorry, not just materialistic growth or something related to your house of career, but it could also be your spiritual growth. It makes you a better person because you start talking on a personal level sometimes. Like I remember there was a time um, I completely lost my confidence, like it, it, I hit, um, I literally hit the ground when it came to confidence. And um, I just, I just went in an igloo. I didn't want to be contacted by anyone. I wanted to be alone and just with my thoughts. And this was only because uh, my father was fighting COVID in the um, 
on a ventilator and I couldn't be in India because India was on a red list and I had a six month old in my arms and, and I was I, I was basically not in the right position. So in that case, um, when um, Jane reached out to me, I told her I've lost my confidence. I can't do anything now. Like I'm, I'm literally broken. I don't know what to do. And it did take time for me uh, to come back. Uh, it took me around a year or two, I would say, to come back to where I could start feeling, okay, I'm, I'm getting better. I will start performing now. And that is what my mentor helped me with. That is where a coach cannot come in for me because I cannot share my emotional levels uh, when it comes to um, me hitting round bottom uh, with a coach. But my mentor will stay with me, transcend over that company or organizational relationship that I had with her. And today we are friends. Like I, I talk to Jane about anything. It's it's that it's that comfortable for me. So so that's that's the difference for me between a coach and a mentor. You did mention some other term. I didn't catch that, yeah. Debbie. Enabler or pathfinder or something. But I'd let I just like to add one thing to what you were saying. Um, I don't agree. I'm just going to be straight with you here. I don't actually agree with that. Um, but I understand that there are different perceptions of what coaches really are. And, and there's a lot of confusion out there in the world. And my understanding is a little bit different. And I'm, it's okay, you know, it's all good. Um, Absolutely. And it's and it's good that you found the support you needed and that for you that was mentorship, you, your understanding of mentorship. I think that your experience with coaches is really actually quite sad because if you had had a good a good coaching experience, you would have understood that that is actually something totally different than what uh, what you were sharing with me right now. So so um, it's actually quite sad that you didn't have that have that positive experience with coaching, but it's good again on the other side that you got it through the mentorship. So however, you know, all roads lead to Rome as they say here, you know. And um, and um Gary, if, I, if, oh, sorry. We got, we got a question from Malcolm there. Let, yeah. let, let's let's take that one as well. Malcolm and, you know look I'm 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 from the polite part of the UK, you know, Wales. We put our hand up. Okay. I'm, jo <laughs> I'm joking. You wait till you deal with people from New Jersey. They've never heard of it. Um <laughs> I have to agree with Debbie, and um, and and I would I would uh, say that uh, Akansha, um, yeah, I I didn't realize that how many mentors and coaches had come across my path until I became one, and I mentally got attuned to to what I was doing, and uh, and this goes all the way back to the. Um, uh, anyone here that uh, probably the Scots are familiar with rugby and so on. Um, I played for a quite a high, you know, ranking club when I was younger, and um, the um, the coach was a, a British lion, and he pulled me aside in um, and uh, if you imagine there were Welsh internationals and English and Irish all on the field in a training session. And he pulled me aside and he said, you are not physically fit to be here. You can't keep up with everybody. And it's not my job to get you fit. My job is to bring out what is in you and have you collate with the, the others around you and play as a team. So I would argue a little bit about um, you know, the the. the the role of a coach is to bring out what is already inherent in a person, not so much to teach them. You can offer some guidance or whatever. So I think there's a very there's a there's a subtle distinction between a teacher and a coach. And also, I from what I'm hearing, there, there is a and I'm I'm familiar with Booper. I used to give him my money. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there's a difference in 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 the world between. Um, mentoring inside of a, a, a corporate environment and how it exists on the outside. And to, to Gary's point, somebody came along and said, look, I'm, I'm, I want to start a business. He said, I don't think you're ready for it. So there is a, a coach imparting experience and guidance, maybe based on what you've said, go back and, and revisit it. So I think that, you know, I'm, and I'm, I act as a, you know, a mentor and a coach, 
you know, to people on the outside of it and on the inside of the corporate world. Sometimes it's it's freebie. Sometimes it's it's paid for services. But I think there is a subtle difference there. And, you know, to what Debbie said, yeah, you didn't meet the right coach. There's plenty of them out there. <laughs> They're good hearted yeah. people um, and they just want to give something back to the world. But I loved your story. And uh, and uh, yeah, my office used to be in Manchester. So hopefully it was a dry day there. <laughs> let's uh, let's give the uh, Daniel Daniel you've got a question or an insights you can yes I just want to say I um I really echo what Debbie and Malcolm have said and uh to AK's point yeah you just didn't quite have a good coaching experience but your understanding of mentorship is is quite good and you can't substitute that relationship and I think these nuances are so important because it's not just a mentor coach counselor, trainer, and even an advisor, they all exist in this gray area and have subtle nuances. And if you look into the chat, I think it should have popped up by now. I put a slide in there that I use that has a question that demonstrates kind of the nuance difference that can be seen between these different areas. And I use this in an introduction to coaching mini seminar that I put on. So I just wanted to share that with you guys. If you get value from it, and if anyone has questions, I can uh, elaborate on it a little more. But uh, I think Malcolm really hit the nail on the head by saying a coach brings out what is already there. And they do so in a non-directive way. If you look at the slide, you'll see it says for consultants, we're going to solve your problem with X, Y, Z is the primary solution. They're essentially telling you what to do. It's not a coach's job to tell you what to do, but to give you passive and non-directive guidance so that you can see what you want, so that you can see the direction you want to go in, because it's more about the decisions that you need to make for yourself. The coach has the vantage point that is oh so great, because they can see what you cannot see. And speaking to the mentorship, they can also see what you do not see, but they can have more of a personal relationship with you. And the coach is a bit more of a professional relationship. That's just how I articulate the difference. But if you all find this slide useful, please feel free to use it. Thank you. Thank you, Daniel. Thank, thank you, Daniel. Stephen, okay. everyone's putting their hands up. So AK, just hang on in there because everyone's just having their little insights as well, which is really good. I love it. Thank you. So Stephen, you got your hand up. You got a... I think I think Malcolm was before me, but it... Uh, I... Malcolm? Oh, Malcolm Curry. Oh, did he already go? <laughs> Malcolm Curry? Malcolm Curry? Malcolm's oh, right. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Stephen. Um, I, it's really just to make an observation similar. And I apologize, I'm going to jump in, but put, put run into the same space that the other Malcolm was covering, because I'm going to talk about rugby as well. Because what, one of the things I do is I'm a um, high performance match official coach with Scottish rugby. Um, and I encourage all of my referees to also have a mentor as well as me as a coach. So I've got one particular, um, Malcolm will be aware of his, his mentor, who is a chap called Nigel Owens, um, who has been sort of one of the top referees up until he retired from refereeing a few years ago. Um, what I found really important is actually to have that as a, an active three-way discussion and, and, and making sure that each of us knows what our support role is for that for that um, referee so that you know the, uh, for example Nigel was very very disciplined when when the referee contacted him and sort of said I'd like to talk about this incident that happened in in a game um, and he would have a conversation with him about it but he, if he identified points for coaching he would always signpost the referee back to me for the coaching input. And um, so he, he was very clear about sort of where his boundary ended. And I was very clear about where I could point, point them towards stuff from Nigel. So it was more the pastoral care that he was, that the, the referee was getting from, from Nigel. And for me, it was more the, the technical and actually the guidance to self-analyze and to come up with, with, with his own solutions. Uh, to the situation so it was really just to feed in that as an observation coming in from a totally different area but i thought it might be useful uh, to to yeah. develop the thought processes great thanks for your input Malcolm. that was that was really clear steve Stephen. so 
I'm going to be the 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 lone sheep here, and I and I think that you're right. <laughs> and and the thing is, is we have our own personal experiences, right? And it's when, especially with the light, like the coaching model, um, I think there needs to be a harmony that exists within you and your mentor, and there needs to be a harmony that exists with you and your coach. And so, if if we move it back to this to the positive feedback loop, right? It's like instead of seeing what's wrong or what's missing, it's moving it into that space of what are we communicating, right? Because there's always a loss in in information when we when we're talking about this, and when we're talking about labels, you know, a coach and a mentor are really it, it's just a different label for somebody that is assisting you on your on your journey. So to me, I don't get I don't get lost in the in the labels. It's more about how can we be of service to somebody else? Do we see somebody that we can help them on their path? And so what I I always like to put things in something that makes sense for me. And so I'm thinking, okay, what is a mentor there for? It's like, we have a couple different areas in our life. We have skills, we have personal growth and awareness. We have um, just overall career progression. And there's these things that, that can be helped with by either a coach or a mentor. It's just somebody that has your back, that has knowledge in these areas. And the way that I kind of organized it, it's like, if they can help you get clarity on your goals and aspirations, then then they can help you drive towards that. And so it's this ability to have an open conversation. So I like I like that you shared your experience, and your experience is to me is is a hundred percent valid. And I think that that's what the world's missing. It's this it's it's really going in and having this interaction with somebody and finding out are you the right person to work with them because it's. Not every coach, not every mentor is right for every other person. And one of the things that I talk with the people that I work with, the best thing that you can do is find somebody that you just do not get along with, that you can't coach or you can't mentor because you don't want to waste your time on them. They drain you. They, it's, it's an unfulfilling experience and it creates work out of something that we don't want to create work out of what we're doing in our second phase of life. We want to do something that we enjoy. So thank you for sharing your experience and, uh, and I think any experience is valid, even if we disagree with it. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you. Uh, Ava, you've got the hand up. Yeah. So um, yeah, I really like what, what Stephen just shared. And I, I like all the, the thoughts people have. And it's fully OK if we don't agree. But for me, it's also the, the main thing is really to be supportive, to really help this person grow and I know there are so many discussions around, um, let's say, ICF coaches really talking about, well, coaching is only you don't you may not offer advice and whatever. But I don't like these discussions. So for me, in the end, sometimes I even in the same session, sometimes I wear the hat of a, of a coach. Sometimes I share some advice. I'm a mentor. So it's, it's not fully just just one way I go. And the other thing I would like to mention is um, sports coaching is, is really difficult, I think. And, and everyone um, understands something different because I was a high performance swimmer when I was young. And I remember my coaches, they were not coaches in a way I understand coaching now. So because they really told me now you need to swim for five kilometers, you need to go in this style and, and whatever in this stroke. And it was not, it was probably it was both as well. So they, they listened how I'm feeling when I didn't feel quite well. They said, well, let's reduce a bit today and, and let's go slower. But they were also there and, and told me what to do. And what I see nowadays in sports, yeah. So sports trainers, uh, coaches, they, they also tell people what to do. So I think it's, yeah, it's, it's, probably as many definitions of, of coaching and understandings of coaching and mentoring as people uh, are there. So, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Eva. I think, yeah, you mentioned, you put another word in trainer as well. Now trainer, coach, mentor. Uh, yeah. All of those figures there. Um, I think one well, important point was, yeah, the coach is the technician who has the tools, the skills to actually help people to get to their goals Whereas a mentorship is someone who's actually been through the journey and maybe as an experienced uh, entrepreneur could be an, uh, a mentor because they've actually uh, had the experience. I think that's another thing. 
Aka, 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 where are we now? We've had a lot of people putting, getting some inputs. <laughs> oh, it's always a mixed bag. And that's the best thing about working with people around, Gary. It's always good to hear. It's good to learn. It's good to unlearn, to relearn. And um, I'm, I'm an absolute optimistic person when it comes to listening to different personality styles. So uh, I like this mixed bag and um, there's a lot for me to learn from. Um, however, there's one thing I'd like to mention that I really consider myself so lucky that my entire journey was only shared with that one person and that I didn't have to go to several other people in terms of having a trainer for one reason, having a coach for another, having a mentor for one. And then it's like going to a different GP every time and repeating your medical history. You know what I mean? So for me, my mentor knows my entire history. And that made my conviction um, in, in that particular journey even more stronger. That belief just kept growing. And now that belief uh, is set in my inner core. And that is where my habits and my intentions are. So it's, it's all basically a contribution of energies that people share with you. Um, I also want to mention what Stephen um, and, 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 and Malcolm and Debbie, uh, when they contributed towards, um, um, towards my story, um, I really like the fact that how um, it was also aligned with how a coach and a mentor in an organization can be, which I'll be very honest, because I had a mentor, I did not really focus on coaching. Uh, or any of those sessions. So I see how they are reflecting that side from my story that maybe I did not have that good experience. And that's quite true because I didn't really have a coach or there's not any coach that I can talk about. You see where I come from? So I don't think Debbie is wrong when she says that um, a coach has something different to offer. And they may have, maybe I have a coach in future, so I'll have a story then to offer. But uh, but but one key thing about um, about having a mentor is the culture that you bring, the culture. You know, Gary, I come from India, and um, we pray every every morning to guru, and guru means mentor. We are not introduced to trainer, coach. We are just introduced to one word, which is guru, and guru is mentor. And that mentor, there's a Sanskrit quote, which says, Guru is Brahma, Vishnu, Maheshwara. Guru is Sakshat, Parmeshwara. Tasmaya Shri, Guruve Namaha. What does this mean? It means that your mentor will help you create your journey. Your mentor will help you preserve your journey. And your mentor will help you destruct, destroy the weeds of ignorance that come in your journey. And I'm very lucky I lived all these three sub parts of my journey with one mentor. Wow! Wow! So, <laughs> so um, let, let's. Uh, Malcolm's got his hand up. Uh, Debbie, did you have something? Debbie's jumped off, or where's she gone? Debbie, no, Debbie? Uh, thank you, Gary, for um, giving me the opportunity. I just wanted to say I think that it's a cultural thing as well. And you were talking about corporate, right? So in business, if you have someone in business that has your back, that's supporting you, that's opening doors for you to new experiences, new people, new networking, new connections, new things, right? Um, you wouldn't consider them your coach. You would consider them your mentor, even though in the conversations, they might be asking you questions like, why do you want to talk to the CEO? You know, what is it you're going to share? And I don't think that would be the best way to address that person. Let's talk about how you could do this differently. You might think of that as being a mentorship or a, a conversation, but actually that's a coaching conversation. And um, so that's where it is actually kind of flows into one another. Um, and I think that um, there is a distinction between the two because I would, I can go to a coach who doesn't know my job or my business or what I do or whatever. I wouldn't go to a mentor though that doesn't have that background. I want to have a mentor that has not necessarily totally been there, done that, got the t-shirt thing, but they know the language. They know what, they know that topic. They can talk about that situation. 
And a coach doesn't have to know that. A coach is more on a deeper level on the on the how I approach life, how I see life. You know, you have your guru where you say you have your prayer, you have your mindfulness, you have your meditation. Um, someone that is all over the map with their knowledge or, or whatever it is, and they never find peace. I don't know if a mentor could help them, but a coach could if they were a good coach, for example. So I just wanted to actually, you know, Iron out that a little bit. Iron out the edges there a little bit. <laughs> Thanks, Debbie. Thanks. Uh, one minute, Malcolm. Marie's got a question. Listen, Marie, you got you got an insight, a question on the, on this topic. Oh, I I really just wanted to comment. I think it was Stephen who mentioned that <laughs> seeking. The more you seek, the more. For me, I know. I've been told you have to have a mentor. You have to have a mentor. So I'm thinking in my head, oh, I got to have a mentor. So I'm out there seeking, seeking, seeking. And of course, the people that I'm finding are not, I got that like, Ugh, no, this isn't going to work feeling right. You know, so the more I realize, the more I seek, the more I don't find. So I really like that idea of just sitting back and receiving and believing that when I'm ready, the right mentor will come into my, my um, life. And I just let go of that seeking because um, I think I felt that pressure of, you know, when you have people telling you, you have to have a mentor because you're not going to make it if you don't. And there's been a lot of that in my circle. I thought I had to find one. And really, I don't need to find one which this has shown me, I don't need to find one. I just need to be open and need to sit back and the correct mentor will come into my, my sphere. So I think really there's that sentence that the, the teacher will arrive when the student is ready. Right? I think there is a saying like that. So just hang in there, Marie, and I'm sure the mentor will arrive. <laughs> Malcolm, you've got the last question before we, we're wrapping up here. Malcolm or oh, David? I, I don't know, let me... Let me just ask Marie, do, do you take credit cards? Um, you, you teed up what I was going to say. Uh, <laughs> oh, right on. <laughs> Good. Uh, I don't know. I can't send the dollar. Um, but it, it, it's and, and really to a, 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 a kangsha. Please excuse me if I, do, I can't read it from here because um, my computers are all over the place. Um, if you, it, it sounded like you are now in, in, the, in, in the, the school system and in you know, um, one thing that I, I would ask anyone in the school system is that um, consider that for the for the pupil, you know, it's it's the it's not so much the message, it's the messenger that makes the right. difference. And um, I saw this, you know, early in my educational life as I moved around. I just didn't get on with teachers, so I didn't have that inclination. You know, and like a famous comedian said, he said, I'm not dumb. I just can't prove it on paper. Um, but I saw what my son went through in the educational system here where someone took an interest in him and became, you know, a, a motivator towards him. And his his career has exploded. It, he's, you know, I won't go into it as a proud dad. But, you know, it it's all about, you know, Getting that connection, and not every kid is 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 destined for, um, you know, a higher education or university. You know, the the world needs plumbers and electricians and 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 people to make stuff. So uh, anyway, I'll I'll get off my. Thank you, Malcolm. Thanks. So, so Elizabeth, we're coming to the end. Aka, do you want to give us a few something we can take away? What? How could we further this knowledge into mentorship? I don't know, podcast, reading, something that you can uh, recommend as we come to a close? I think self-awareness is a must for a mentee. Um, keep building that rapport with your mentor. Ask for feedbacks. Feed forward, like I said earlier. And very, very important is your performance. Don't let it die. It's very important for you to keep performing because when a mentee wins, a mentor wins. And when a mentor wins, the whole belief system wins because a mentor brings that reputation, all the years of career that they've had, the networking, it's all a power of people that they carry along with them. And when a mentee wins, 
it's the ripple effect of that belief. The whole system wins. So I think you have to keep performing. You have to keep thriving and um, just don't stop. Keep going on. <laughs> that is what I would say when it comes to mentorship. Um, yeah. Share that beautiful relationship with your mentor. If you don't have one, I'd say either seek or don't seek, but go with your energy, go with your flow. Don't pressurize yourself. Um, uh, and uh, and just be very kind to yourself first. Be compassionate towards yourself, your goals, your dreams. Um, it's okay to understand what is and how it is to balance uh, that personal and professional life um, and be happy where you can call yourself um, someone who's achieved everything with the right levels of sanity because that is very, very important, Gary. Yeah, yeah. Listen, so thank you very much, Aka, for all your insights. Everyone, thank you very thank much you. For, your, for your input. Next week, the next Be Well is on the 26th, Tuesday, 5 to 6 again. Uh, we're not going to have a topic facilitator or co-host. We're just going to have people who have actually come along and be, been topic facilitators or guest speakers are coming along. We're going to have a Be Well get-together. So if you're free, you want to come along, please do. Everyone's just going to be talking about where we are with our projects, with where we're going, what are our insights since the last time they came on the Be Well webinar and so on. So it's just an interaction moment. So if you're free, please come along. Okay. Thank you again and have a nice evening. We'll speak to you soon. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.